Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another episode of the Cons Cast. I'm here with Fighting Cowboy. You know what that means? We're going to be talking about Lords of the Fallen. How you doing, Fighting Cowboy? Sleepy. I bet you are. <laughs> Sleepy. Yeah. You've been uh, recording Lords of the Fallen like an absolute madman. I've seen. I have. I'm. I'm done the let's play. Um, I need to start on the walkthrough, but I'm having thoughts about that that we can discuss since we get into the thick of things mm. um <clears throat> but yeah i mean let's play's done i got a build video done i plan on getting my review done probably either later today or tomorrow so it's lots gonna and lots of content I'm, I'm not gonna be able to to hit that uh that embargo as a matter of fact by the time that this goes up the review embargo will have lifted but i mean uh, you, you to be fair you could have hit it but you decided to preserve your experience until launch uh no I, I i doubt i would have had the time dude i've been busy these cup these last couple of days so you know because i wanted mm. to also i wanted to also do like my beginner's guide video and all of that stuff so i have like a, a big beefy beginner's guide that will have been live now uh and i did my first impressions video after playing like 30 hours of the game like you know i lost a save file right yeah but i mean to be <laughs> fair that starter area takes like three hours like, you mean when you were like when you were when you were like I've lost my save. I was like, I went back and I looked at it because the walkthrough prep I did everything that I'm allowed to do in embargo. But it was your second playthrough. Yeah, and it took like four hours, and that was like with dicking around and testing mechanics. Yeah, my uh, my second uh, character that I did doing all of that content. It was actually funny because I forgot how much there was on the tail end because it's like two bosses almost next to each other. So I was like, okay, I'm going to clear everything up until this uh, third boss or whatever. And then the next stream I start up and I'm like, oh, I just one shotted the next two bosses. So there's nothing left to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really short yeah, live stream. That's, that's why I pushed it through. I did because I had, I was like, I was up to the bosses during prep and I'm like, this is only going to take me like 15 minutes. And I just killed them and was like, okay, now you all have seen everything you're allowed. Yeah. Adios. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's it's interesting because it this game, and this is something that I wanted to get into because there's been that whole discussion about oh the game looks clunky, the game looks floaty, and there, listen, here's here's where I'm coming in from this. I think that when you first start playing the game, because I believe you had uh, like did you get flown out or something, or did you go uh, to an event or something where you played before? I, did, I didn't play it at all. I didn't I didn't even okay, watch so the this, trailers leading up to this. So this yeah. time you didn't get to play it at all. Okay. Because like the first time that I played the game, I definitely felt that. But then again, I also chose to play that uh, dumb class that that has the bucket, which was fun. Did I'll tell you what, the bucket is actually fun, okay? Cuz the bucket's like a fist weapon, and so if you if you like two-hand it, it becomes like dual wielding. And you just go like thush, thush, with buckets. It's actually bucket, kind of bucket cool. punch. Bucket punch. No, so so I did that class, and um, one of the things that I instantly notice is that when you roll, like bro, your character covers half the map with a roll. The rolls are nice. Yeah, that's that's where I'm coming from when I say that the the movement feels a little bit floaty. See, I think, I mean, it depends on your your speed, obviously. Like if you're lightweight, you're flying. If you're yeah. medium, it's quite aggressive. And then if you're uh. I haven't heavy. tested heavy yet. A heavy, heavy is like a dolphin dive. You like, <laughs> and then, um, but I think a part of it was the the last game had had a, uh, you know, such a, a clunky souls stigma around it. Yeah. That with this one, they're like, all right, you're gonna run fast as fuck. You're gonna roll fast as fuck. <laughs> like, because the running speed in this game, the is first insane, time I started, yeah. I know it's so nice. I'm like, I'm Jimmy Quickfeet. Look at me go, <laughs> like just zipping around and everything. Which, I mean, you need it to to run some of these distances. But I I don't know. I think when I when I very first started playing, the only thing I felt was was clunky was the umbral mechanic, and that was just a matter of it clicking. Once it clicks. I think it becomes natural when you but like the the first couple hours getting used to to switching between regular and umbral and finding when you can leave umbral and using it okay. for exploration that I mean, it's just a learning curve. But the first time you do it, you're like, well, I, don't, I don't like this. I don't like See, this. I mean, I, it's just you know, it, old man begrudging. Like It was interesting oh. because before I played the game, that was the thought process that I had. I was thinking like, oh my God, this is going to be such a nightmare to actually explore because you have to think about, oh, when, it, when should I be going Umbral? When should I be going Axiom? Like, well, what should I be doing? And then after I actually played it, 
I was like, no, this is actually really cool because you essentially have like access to two worlds. But at the same time, they're very smart about giving you both visual cues and in some situations like audio cues that allow you to identify where the comeback statues are. Because like if you're close to a comeback statue, your lantern will start leaving out like a trail of light. And you'll yep. start hearing strange noises and whatnot. You're like, oh, there's a comeback statue here in case I need to go humble and I can come back. But then there's also the whole butterflies thing where they show you where stuff was. So the umbral exploration was actually a part that instantly clicked for me. The thing that I feel like didn't instantly click was the combat itself. Because again, you had that floaty feeling. And, and again, I want to clarify this because a lot of people like they, they bring up some of the stuff that, that I said on my, on my first stream when I'm still like getting my bearings with the game. They're like, ah, oh, this feels clunky, whatever, because you're just starting to play it out. I feel like there was an adaptation period for me during that first stream where stuff wasn't clicking. I'm just like, okay, this is weird. I roll way too far, so I keep rolling past enemies, and then I'm trying to turn around, and the camera like takes a while to readjust. And that was the weirdness. Once the combat clicked, I was like, no, this, this feels great. This is actually a lot of fun. I was having fun with I think it. The, the only struggle I had at the very start, I was messing around between one-handing or two-handing the, uh, the long sword. And I was like, man, one handing feels way faster. The damage increase the, is incredibly minimal. You did the wolf minimal. class, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then once I got the the first Unga Bunga Club, instantly I was like, okay, this this is this is how this is how strength is supposed to work. I hit you, your poise breaks. I kill you. I kill your friend. I kill your mother and your children and your family. <laughs> this is like not my little weak claymore. That was the problem. I started, you know, with what was basically a claymore and I was trying to use it like a true unga bunga. And so once once I got because once I got that, that hammer carried me all the way up to skin and tooth. Skin and tooth carried me all the way through the end of the game. I don't know. Um, I don't know what skin and tooth is, and I, I, again, I don't want to dive into spoilers, so be it's, careful. It's, ba there. it's just, it's just, it's, it, it's a great sword you find in like the third town. Okay, but it's just really nice. Uh, it has a little bit of fire damage. It has burn, so against like the bosses, I was getting the burn status up a lot. It's just, it was my baby. It was my fugs for this playthrough. Sword carried me the whole game. It had like really good rune slots, so I had a. Uh, Two physical amplifications and then like a health on kill so that was nice because you'd go into umbral and kill those those trash can enemies and you'd get like you know 20 health back for each kill so kill five of them and it's a nice chunk of health you get mm. interesting yeah, i haven't nice, done nice nice grand weapon i, I think it's i think it's the best that, uh, uh the, rune the best grand sword in the game okay i haven't done any of that rune smithing stuff because it doesn't unlock i think before the the moment uh up until the moment yeah. that we get to, to play I'm assuming well, yeah, so it unlocks there's, afterwards. There's, there's basically th there's three runes you have to give her. And like the first rune, you get some. The second one, you get more runes. And then the third one, there's like a plot choice, but it's, it, you know, you're set. And then you unlock rune slots as you level your weapon up. So you get one slot, and then two, and then eventually three. How many, uh, because at this point you finish the game, are there like enough uh, materials to upgrade plenty of weapons, or are you kind of <sighs> limited in that regard? So you're. Your one through nine materials you can buy an infinite supply of. Okay. But in terms of final upgrades, I only found the chunk needed for the plus 10. I think I found three of them. Okay. And then uh, similar to respects, I only found three items to let you respec. Okay, so that is going to be uh, very limiting. See, I did not know that respects were going to be that limited. Like, I was actually... A little bit annoyed because I was playing with uh, the spear guy and I was like, I just want to do spear. I want to play with spear because spear is pretty fun, gives you a lot of reach, even though the move set is somewhat limited. But, uh, you know, I was having fun with the spear and then eventually I unlock, ooh, boss soul, spear, except this spear scales with strength and I've been pumping agility this whole time. <laughs> this friggin' sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I think there it's I mean you could still you could still get get every weapon up to like plus nine and then you could look yeah. and see, you know, what's this gonna turn into when it hits plus ten. But there were some instances, because like the UI, and then hopefully this is all fixed by launch, but there were some goofy instances where like the actual damage upgrade wasn't showing properly at the blacksmith. Oh. So I like I took justice and I'm like, all right, well, I need to upgrade this and see if this is gonna be stronger than my weapon. And so I used one of my plus tens. It was like a holy great sword. Upgraded it, just barely under the damage of skin and tooth. So I was like, 
all right, well, this does not make the cut. I will keep using skin and tooth, but that was, you know, that was one of my three upgrade mats. And now that's gone. And yeah. thankfully I have one more, which I used on, on a Unga Bunga hammer you get at the end of the game. I wonder if you can like maybe farm those chunks off of anything. Cause like you could get, say like tight. I mean, you, you might. And... So I haven't, I haven't killed Scarlet Reaper yet. He might, might drop one. I don't know. The, okay. the enemy, if you stay in Umbral too long, the, the angry red blade reaper that shows up i've never seen it it's it, it just it's it's basically the like you've been here too long i'm here to kill you guy but you can okay. beat him but once you once the eye goes red uh your healing is blocked off which makes Ooh. it you know a little bit of a sweaty fight yeah because you gotta yeah. take out this dude who has hp regen while you have no healing yourself and dealing with all the other bullshit and umbral that's spawning around the gargoyles the fairies all that crap Jesus Christ, that sounds like uh, quite a lot. So I wanted to, I guess we should start also by talking a little bit about performance because that was something that I had to deal with quite a bit. How are things on your end? Uh, NVIDIA has been mostly smooth. Uh, there's, there was one area known as the Leprosarium towards the end of the game that was chugging. And I think it was something with that zone. So I actually found like there was a wall in the zone that I just walked through and I was like, hidden wall? I was like, is this, this is a fake wall, not an umber wall, like a full hidden wall. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm running around on this rooftop. And then I was like, no, wait, this is a dead end. This I'm, is not meant I'm to happen. I'm out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like... I'm out of bounds. Yeah. And then, and then I tried to walk back and I ended up clipping through a part and I fell under the map and was looking at the textures from below and was like, yeah, it definitely was not a false wall. That was not meant. So oh, no. <laughs> I think that that one, I think there was some, some fuckery in that zone. Um, you know, obviously I told the devs about all this. So I'm sure they're, they're chugging along to try and patch all this stuff um, i've I heard was, console performance is rough i haven't tried console but i've heard i've heard it's not the it's smoothest in, it's interesting i've heard the opposite i've heard pe people in my comments have been saying oh dude people playing on ps5 it's great it's fantastic and as a matter of fact that dude i had this this comment that i just had to highlight on twitter i saw it i saw it yeah. <laughs> most smooth brain dude I, I had people like that the other day when i was when i was playing cyberpunk and it like it was crashing because I had, uh, I think hardware acceleration wasn't playing nicely with the game or something, so I yeah. had to disable that. And they were like, oh man, this is why a PC is so bad. I don't have these problems on my PS5 or my Series X. And I'm like, yeah, bro, okay. I turned off one setting and now I'm playing the game at, at 100 plus FPS, 4K, real-time path tracing, ultra graphics, and you're playing on a fucking potato. Like, it's it's like the thing is i don't think it's healthy to go either way it's like look if you can only play on a console play on a console if you can only play on pc play on pc if you'd rather play on one or the other plan whatever you want it doesn't matter it's it's just so weird to me that people are like oh you're crashing yeah that's because pc gaming sucks this is why See, this, PC is, this is this it's is like, my, my thing stop. is this i don't i don't believe in console wars i think they're stupid at the end of the day it's all billion dollar corporations that want yep. their money they don't they don't give a shit which flag you're flying but the people that will unironically try to suggest that a PS5 or a Series X is better than PC, that's where I draw the line. Because like, <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even a matter of, like, you know, there, there is no, no PC conglomerate we're, we're declaring allegiance to. It's just a factual statement that like, yeah, my 4090 is going to run laps around your console. That's the yeah. way hardware works. Like the, the PS, PS5 and Series X, the... The GPUs in those are equivalent to what, like a 2070 or something? Uh, I honestly have no idea, but they're AMD GPUs, I think. I don't even think they're uh, yeah. NVIDIA. Yeah, like by, by the time those consoles released, they were already considered next or uh, past gen by PC standards. And so people, when people are like, yeah, my console is better, I'm like, stop, stop. You, might, you about, might as well be telling me two plus two equals three. I'm like, no, like this is a factually incorrect statement. It's <laughs> like, stop. the only, the only thing to me is that, and this is something that bothers me is whenever people try to tell me I, I can get $500 and make a PC that's better than your PS5. And I was like, well, go ahead. Well, fucking go ahead. Do it. I want to say, <laughs> go, go on. And then people come with me with configurations and they're like, oh yeah, I made this PC with a, with a 1070. And I was like, yeah. Stick it up your ass. Like, you gonna tell me that's gonna match up to like a, a, a PS5 or get the hell out of here, bro. What is wrong with you? Like, people no, are that, just weird when like, it comes like to that for, argument, dude. For affordability, yeah. Consoles, absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's, there's no argument there, but like, 
But if, if money is not an object, then yeah, PC is usually yeah. the best gaming experience. You know, like so, I've, I've had people try to tell me their their PS5 was better than my like seven thousand dollar <laughs> PC. I'm like, bro, stop! Like, <laughs> seek help. Like, no. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's you. You can say that it's better value, maybe, because it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's sure. better value for sure, hundred yeah, percent. Like, <laughs> but like, no, you're not gonna get better performance. It, it's just, it's just a, a, a stupid discussion, and I don't think it makes any sense whatsoever. But you know, what I was the point that I was trying to get to is that during the weekend, the team deployed not one but two patches in the game on a weekend. In order to improve yeah. performance, which I think was pretty good. <clears throat> you know, the performance has been better. It's still not like super giga stable because it's like you can get above 60, no problem. The problem is it then oscillates between like 90 and 70 and 80, and it's like a little bit all over the place. So I'm still hoping that they figure some of that stuff out because they did say that the game was better optimized for like lower end rigs. And the problem was when they ran into uh, streamer supercomputers and they were like, oh, this is this is an issue. <laughs> Cause there, I, I, that, well, that, that was my problem with Remnant. They're like, oh, yeah, we exactly. didn't test this. And I'm like, you didn't, it's not optimized for the highest end commercially available stuff. Yeah, that's, no. that's the problem. They, they try to shoot for like the average, uh, what the average consumer is getting. And then when you get the really high end stuff, like, you know, my, my GPU isn't even like the highest end. The 6900 XT is a little bit outdated by now. But uh, you on the 49, yeah, you're on the highest end. But then again, you didn't have that many problems because probably you're just brute forcing through everything when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> that's, that's why I have a 4090. I'm like, you know what? Just push the graphics as high as you possibly can. No, but I can... Um, and call it. I've, I've been playing everything pretty much on Ultra. Uh, and it's been okay since they've done the, the last two patches. Initially, it was a little bit rough. But after that, like, what do you think of the game in terms of visuals? I think the visuals are beautiful. I think the uh, the lighting sometimes is a, a a bit too dark, and there's no brightness setting that I've seen. There is. So like some. There's a where? setting that's called calibrate screen on your graphic settings. Huh. They I was named looking it for just <clears throat> brightness. Yeah, I, I know they name <clears throat> they name it calibrate screen, and then you can change brightness, contrast, saturation. <clears throat> yeah, because there there are times where I was down in like the depths, and I'm like can't see shit down here <laughs> yeah. and i'll pull I, out my like I, I was actually using the umbral lamp as just a light source i'm like what's, what's <laughs> over this way i can't, I can't fucking see anything no but it, it doesn't surprise me because like my my hdmi um my hdmi input makes things a little bit darker than usual and yeah stuff got very 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 dark so i would bump up the brightness all the way but yeah there is there is definitely a setting for that so that's cool but yeah i think that the visuals i think that they look good but i think that at sometimes i feel like they almost went too overboard in the amount of visual detail and it makes it hard for me to sometimes distinguish enemies that are on screen you ever ran into that okay it's just my old man eyes then it's, it's just me it's just a me thing there's too much detail here. There's too much detail. Back in my day, graphics were simpler. Enemies had a red aura and you knew they were bad. And now it's just blending in and I can't see shit. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly me, man. 41-year-old gamer. I'm, I'm like, I'm struggling, man. Throw me a friggin' bone. Um, you want that accessibility setting that just highlights all the enemies? Like, and like nice in Last of aura's? Us? Yeah, yeah, that's what you need now. <laughs> like the oh, high look, contrast. There's a, bad, there's a bad guy over there. I Good. need to get now like I, know. I need to get like new spectacles. Maybe that'll help. You know, get some of those um, bottom of bottle thickness ones. They'll probably help. No, oh, but I God. think I think that visually the game looks good. But I also feel like um, that amount of visual detail does not translate properly to YouTube. Did you get comments on that? Dude, I, I've I stopped reading the YouTube comments on the early stuff. Damn, that bad people i like it felt like people wanted to hate this game yeah i i got i got that vibe as well i definitely got that vibe as well people were, like people i mean that you had you had your like your your trash can comments so they're just like game is shit and that was it no no other thing but then like some people the, the thing that's crazy to me i had a ton of people show up and they're like this is a huge downgrade from what we saw and i'm like what are you talking about and everyone would talk about like either a game spot or an ign video from the the preview that happened back in august and I'm watching the video 
side by side with my own gameplay of that zone and i'm like this is this is literally identical i think one of the um one of the issues that that happened is that you know that that the first one of the first zones that you get which is called pilgrim's perch yeah. the the moment that you step outside it starts raining and raining just completely destroys the youtube compression algorithm it just destroys Probably, yeah. it like it just destroys the, quality the, <sighs> The area that, that that preview footage was in was like the approach to, to Kalrath. So basically the transition from zone two to zone three. And I was watching that episode next to like the IGN footage. And I'm like, I would even argue it looks better on my end because I'm using the, the AV1 because you encoder. Have, and you have higher bitrate probably than IGN, yeah. I would imagine. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm running AV1 at 20,000. That's the equivalent of like a 54,000 uh, MP4 video with like yeah. a 264. And I'm like, this is like, what are these people talking about? Because visually it looks, it looks at least comparable, if not better. But it, so it's, I, I don't know. It's what I'm telling you. I think that in a lot of situations, probably some people are watching it like 720p, right? Yeah. And, and that, like, this looks that blurry. Yeah. That algorithm is going to mess with you specifically because of the amount of detail that is on screen at any given time. There's just tons yeah, and tons to, of detail. It has to blur stuff out. Yeah. And then it starts blurring stuff out. And if you turn your camera a little bit too fast, everything gets like Vaseline all over. Again, YouTube, I feel like, is not a proper representation of how the game looks. I think the game looks pretty good. Uh, it's not my favorite art style, so to speak. But overall, I think the game does look good. I think the animations look good with the... I mean, the, it's, it's very dark gothic, but in, in terms of visuals, I would, I would compare it to like, a, like the Demon's Souls remake, where they just focused on, on just pumping visuals a ton. Mm. So I definitely think in terms of graphical fidelity, I think it's higher than Elden Ring was for sure. Oh yeah, in terms of raw graphical fidelity, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Especially especially on the PC version. I haven't gotten to check out PlayStation version or anything like that, but there's definitely tons of visual detail on it, basically. Yeah. But like I said, the art style is one of those things that is not going to be super appealing to everyone, I feel like. To me, it's okay. It's not my favorite art style is what I'm getting at, right? Yeah. I love the, the dark gothic <laughs> stuff, so. I yeah, think like the I said. The biggest complaint, I've seen, how, do, how do you feel about the sound? I've seen a lot of people complaining about the sound. See, there's a weird thing about the sound. Uh, and again, this might be something that might have changed by the time that this video comes out. But just today, and this is something that I noticed when I was fighting uh, the first boss, Pieta, is that sometimes her voice would almost like fade out a little bit. So she was, you know, like when you're in Discord and then suddenly you start speaking a little bit lower and it gets cut out. Well, it, voices, so I've noticed voices are, they're centralized to your character's ears. Like if you're talking to an NPC and you're panning the camera like this, you'll yeah, hear yeah, it yeah. go from one ear to the other. And I think it's the same in bosses. Like if she's talking and you turn and you start hauling ass away, she's going to be like, Risen Champion, where are you going? Come right. and you're just like, <laughs> no, like, hey, I ain't listening to you. Get out of here. No, but, but there like were, I, I, I've heard it with web. A lot of people are saying that the weapon sounds. People just hate the weapon sounds. Like that's not what a sword should sound like. That's not. It's like yeah, because you're all fucking audio engineers. Like sit down. I I don't know. I haven't paid too much attention to weapon sounds, but I've seen comments on on that end as well of people complaining about just like weapon hit sounds and whatnot. It's again, it's one of those things that for me initially the combat felt clunky. Once it kind of clicked and things just fell into place, I just didn't pay that much attention to it and. I've also been playing with a spear, so I don't know if that changes things, because spear is just kind of like, poke, poke. You just hear the yeah. the well, thrusting sound. I was sound a hammer for it. a huge part of the game, and the hammer is like, thunk. When you're thunk. a hammer, every problem is a nail. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, That's not what a hammer sounds. I'm like, what? But it was like, you know, I'm hitting like a, a gooey corpse, and people are like, should sound like metal clashing. And I'm like, Why? You're hitting. You're hitting a. a it should sound ethereal, like flesh. Yeah. Yeah. You're hitting a, a, a ethereal corpse made of goop. What would, you know, what would this sound like otherwise? Yeah, I, I don't know about the sound stuff myself. I haven't really felt it too much, uh, so that's not really something that bothered me all that much. But yeah, there's definitely an an overall uh, vibe that I got from it, and this is something that I felt with other games as well, where I feel like. There's a lot of people in, in the community nowadays that just want to be able to get a negative take out of a game. 
And then that way they can just go on Twitter and be like, ah, this game is bad because of this one negative thing that I found. Yeah. And it feels almost like people are trying to find reasons not to like games as opposed to the other way around, which is kind of like a weird situation we find ourselves in. Dude, like I said, I've, I've gotten to the point now when I, if I'm, if I'm browsing YouTube comments and I see somebody just mindlessly hating on a game, they're like, this game's shit, this game fucking sucks. This fu- and there's this no reason terrible. behind it. There, there, there's no, there's no actual like. Yeah. If somebody's like, the sound designs don't sound too hot for me. I think it should sound more like blah blah blah. Okay. That's criticism. Cool. Yeah. Sound design is shit. Banned. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> like literally. Just I'm, not either, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, okay. I click the dots. Hide user from channel. You, you you're making a dumb shit comment. I never want to see your comment again. I don't care. Yeah. Because I just, I don't have time. Because the thing is, like, when you're when you read hundreds of thousands of comments a day, and you have so many people that are just being negative about something. Like, I don't, I don't want that, that, you know, yeah. like I'm not, I'm not like a spiritual person, but I believe that being surrounded by negative assholes constantly, like that shit rubs off on you. Yeah. That, that was one of the things that I, I brought up on Twitter yesterday that I feel like there's, there's way too much negativity. It's like, I can understand if some people are not into the game. I think that's fine. Like maybe you feel the roles are too unrealistic. Maybe you wanted something a little bit more grounded. Like we've seen in other souls games. That's fine. But I feel like there's an over-exaggeration in a game where I'm personally just, you know, I've had a couple of crashes. I've had a couple of issues in my streams. But other than that, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've been really enjoying exploring, like, the Umber Realms and doing all of that crazy stuff and just trying to figure out how to defeat bosses and all of this. So I'm just like, bro, this is a fun game. I'm having fun with it. I don't care. I'm going to be doing a full playthrough of it. I'm going to be live streaming the whole thing. And it's going to be a blast. Just wait, wait till you hit my level of jaded where you just start banning people. I mean, I've, I've, I've had, I've had a couple of people that like, if they come in with that type of energy, I, I've also been getting tired of like, okay, look, I don't, I, if this is all you're bringing to the table, like that's enough. I'm like on my phone, it's like, bloop, bloop, you got it. Like, yeah, that's, that's, I, that's, I can't. But, but, you know, if somebody actually wants to have an interesting discussion, like, hey, I don't like this, this sound, I don't like this thing because of this, this thing doesn't feel right, whatever. I think that those are interesting conversations. Dude, I, had, I had some, I had some dumb ones in the stream. I was, um, so I had like the pyromancer start and I was using that, that big one hand halberd staff. Yeah. And, you know, it's like sweet, sweet. And they were like, yeah, the attack speed feels really slow in this. So I'm like, and I was just like, you know what? I want you to. Get off your computer, go to your garage, pick up a shot broom, and swing that shit around with one hand, and tell me how fast you can swing it. Like, yeah, it's, it's like I just I I like, felt so, 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 so. What am I supposed to use this like it's a, a fucking one handed short sword? Like it's a giant pole arm. It has like a fifteen weight units on it, and they're like it's too slow. Like, what? It, it's it's one it's one of those situations where there's definitely been a lot of uh, a lot of discourse about that type of stuff. But like overall, I felt like um, my spear felt a little bit slower than what I've expected. Then I like I equipped a a regular a straight sword, and those are like giga fast. There's like you know like freaking Zoro, yeah. like a goddamn rapier. That surprised me a little bit. I don't know if that's something that the team is looking at or not at this point. Well, I do I do think. <laughs> At least with the dual wield move set. So right now with like power stancing, there's basically two move sets. There's the light where you have two weapons that are categorized as light, and then everything else is put into the heavy category. And I don't like that. Interesting. Because like if you're using two uh, like claymores, basically, you have the same move set as if you're using two grand hammers, and that doesn't make sense to me. I feel like there should be a light. You should have a clear medium power stance set and then a heavy because like you know the way you're going to swing two fugs is not the same way you're going to swing two claymores like those are obviously complete one one weighs 10 weight units the other weighs 40 like yeah i need to see different different move sets here so uh with heavy weapons at least dual wielding just really isn't worth it Um, oh that's sad to hear so with light weapons it is with light weapons, you you get like really fast attacks, and especially if you're using status, they can be really solid because you'll get the the multi hits of the status build up. But for for heavy weapons, like if you're going for like you know if you're using the the thirty two weight grand hammer, honestly, best thing I found was just two hand it charge attacks, hmm. charge heavies because the hammer in particular you like wind back and you have a huge forward lunge with it, and so I was a bonk and everything, and then uh, 
I don't remember where. I think it was I think it was like two thirds through the game, but I found an eye that just turned me into a god. Like the eye you can put into your lamp. Into your, it like into gives you a lantern, passing yeah. effect. Yeah. There was one where it was like I can't even believe this is a real thing. But it was a uh, while charging heavy attacks, uh damage you take becomes wither damage and you, you have like infinite poise. So I would be fighting like a boss and I would just like charge, 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 and it would smack, 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 and I'd lose like half my health and then I would go And then you'd bonk, recover it and I'd get back all my health and I'm like, welcome to the Unga Bunga. Yeah, well, for for people that don't understand, wither damage is basically like uh recoverable damage, so your health bar gets grayed out, but then as you hit your enemies without, you know, getting hit back, your health bar fills back up. So so long as they don't actually remove your withered damage during the charge. Yeah, you're in the clear. You can unga bunga the crap out of it with that uh, yeah. with that specific upgrade. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple. I was there was one boss I was fighting where like the first attack they would hit me with would umbral, and the second one would chop it off. So I think it's it's I think bosses have some type of like built in multi hit, or it might have been like a status on the weapon that was proccing. Um, so there was one boss I was like, why is my, cause I got used to it and I was just like, you know, killing all the elite enemies like that. And then I got to the boss and I'm like, my unga bunga is in bunga. And what's <laughs> happening here? Like, I have to actually dodge roll again. What is this? I can't just stand here and tank everything. Like I've been doing the whole game. That's actually, yeah. um, an, an interesting thing with the, um, with the status applications that you were talking about, because that was something that I was trying to do on the last boss that we were allowed to show for early access, the congregator of flesh. And it felt yeah. like he was immune to status. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, because I was. He's. I, I think. I think anything that's. Um, anything that's considered like monstrous, like his size. I know you can't get criticals because even if you break his his poise, he yeah, just doesn't do like, anything. Flops down. Yeah. yeah, he flops down. You have like a two three second window to get damage in, and then he stands back up. And and it's not like you're getting even anything additional damage or anything whenever you you no. got to no, that yeah. point. Yeah, but that that boss was like the first time because um. I was trying out different uh, weapons and whatnot to try and see if I could proc like burn status or I also had, I think, bleed status. And I was trying yeah. to spam just like everything that I could on the boss and no bleed status, no burn well, so, status. So I, and I, was I like, posted Why? that. I asked the devs for that and I posted exactly how those statuses work. They're actually all, they're, they're fairly similar. So we have uh, looking between Radiant and, and Rogar. We'll, we'll just just think of it like uh like you know fire and holy um holy damage is just the damage type fire damage is just a damage type same as physical but then radiant you have bleed and smite and rogar you have burn and ignite with bleed it grows over several hits what's the when difference the... between burn and ignite <clears throat> so burn is just a damage over time effect when burn triggers yeah. they take damage until it's gone ignite grows over several hits when it fills they go in a poof of flame, and then any subsequent hit uh, dealing fire damage gets a bonus. And Bleed and Smite work almost identical to that. Bleed and Smite, status effects that grows over several hits when field enables a initial burst of damage and applies additional damage on any subsequent hit delivering physical until the bleed effect is gone, or any subsequent hit developing holy until the bleed is gone. So the, the only difference between Bleed, Smite, and Ignite, they're all fundamentally the same, but it's a status that when it procs, with bleed on, hits the deal physical, deal extra. With smite, hits the deal holy, deal extra. With ignite, hits the deal fire, deal extra. Okay. And then you have burn, which is just a damage over time tick. Poison, which is just a damage over time tick. And then frostbite, which is a burst of damage, and it halves the stamina, which I don't Damn. know how that works on <clears throat> enemies, but... Yeah, I mean, I think if you wanted to be, be pretty busted, you know, if you were to go you for... Want it, um, you want to go for bleeds, basically. With If you want to go pure melee without using spells, you want to go for bleeds. Is what you're getting at yeah yeah you could go or well what i did um so like with my sword my sword had burn and it had uh fire damage built into it so i would put fire salts on it to increase the fire damage and then i had a ring that when you apply burn you also apply ignite and that got pretty wild Ooh. I would, <laughs> yeah because i would the burn would proc the ignite would proc and then my sword already having fire damage plus the fire salt was like bonus hit, bonus hit, bonus hit, bonus hit, bonus hit. So that was that got pretty spicy really fast. Um, I didn't mess around with holy a lot. I heard from from a few people that holy gets gets pretty insane from the the damage bonus that smites putting out. But you know, being Unkabunga man, I was yeah. that was that was not my path. 
I was um, one of the things that I saw from enemies specifically when it came to the holy thing was like that shield yeet that they were doing. I was like, bro, I oh, want to do so that. So annoying, dude. I want. I want yeah, to do want the that. Captain America shield yeet. I, want, I, I don't know if you get dropped. that spell, but the the spell the paladins were using, where they would just enchant their shield, and yeah, if you hit it, you got backlash. That was mm -hmm. not not the yeet, the one where they. They Isn't like it the same it. thing? Because because I feel like what happened to me was I was well, they, fighting. They have a shield. They they will throw it at you, Captain America style. But there's a buff they can get where they'll just approach you while blocking, and if you hit the shield, you bounce off and receive damage. Yeah, but that that was the thing. It seemed to me like he enchanted it with that, and then yeah. he threw it at me after he. No, did I'm not. That. I'm yeah. The throw, yeah. But he also has like because they would do that, and then I would try to charge up a heavy. And I would just bounce off their shield and take damage from attacking it. See, I thought that was the same spell. So it's two different spells, one of it for the shield and another one to throw it. I think, yeah, I think the throw is, is a, its own thing. I don't know. I, that's something I'll, I'll play around on the walkthrough because I'm probably going to work faith into it just because the sheer amount of, of support the Radiance Tough tends to get seems like it would be very walkthrough yeah. friendly. From the from the the starting classes I tried out, I tried out the the bucket man, the, which is like the deprived class, whatever. I tried the hollowed knight. I didn't have the dark crusader. Did you have the dark crusader? He's no. so from what I can tell. Besides deluxe edition, I think you get him. So you unlock new classes when you you finish the game. If you beat, if you go for like third ending, you get uh like umbral man. If you go for, I got the first ending, so I got like uh uh Orion preacher man and it's like a starting class i could boot it up and check i think it has like no, a, a halberd and some some casting stuff okay that's not the aureus preacher because aureus preacher is already it's, yeah the, the or, yeah it's it's like a different aureus preacher hang on okay i'll let me I'll, I'll pull it up in the background and i'll tell you exactly what it is yeah but and like I, I think i'm pretty sure dark crusader is the the bad guy ending you unlock him so depending on what ending you get you just unlock a new starting class which at the end of the day doesn't it's, really matter. It, it doesn't you matter know. that much. It, it's just a, always, weird, uh, a weird thing that they've locked it behind uh, the Deluxe Edition. But to be honest, between this and doing the stuff that a lot of people have been doing, which is like, oh, we charge you like $20 extra for the Deluxe Edition and you can play like three or four days yeah. early. Or I don't like that. That I don't like. Like locking a class behind, I, I don't really care that much because classes in this game is just a template. It's whatever. Dude, it, it always annoyed me that... Like you said, classes are, they're a template. But despite that, we always get people that are like, the best class for strength. The bet, like, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. It I mean, doesn't matter. Classes, classes are, are silly it's like in games like this. The best, the best class for strength. Oh, it's easy. You look up whichever one of it starts with the most strength. It's that one. <laughs> yeah. That's so, the best class for strength. <laughs> so it's, it's a radiant purifier is what I unlock, which Damn. is a more, so that the preacher, you're a bit of a thick boy. You have a hammer and a shitty shield and you start with, uh, with Dude, the, the throw I mean, thing. Let me tell you something. Have you tried out the preach the the preacher? No, but I will Bro. grab a uh, I'll grab a screenshot of this and I'll drop it in Discord. You look you yeah. look kind of edgy. You look like Holy Bloodborne man, and you start with a. Uh, I kind of want to use it for my walkthrough and be like, yeah, if you don't have it, too bad. Get too good. bad. <laughs> <laughs> you better get started playing the game then. If you don't have it, you better start playing the game. But okay, it looks guys, pretty rad. We... You, you, you have a halberd, you got some ropes, you have your little oh, this is actually, hat. This is perfect because the, the screenshot you sent me perfectly crops over to your camera. So I don't even have to do any editing. It shows everything that he starts with. Yeah. That's nice. But I mean, it's still, you know, it's, it's just a starter class. That's it. And yeah, like, yeah. as soon as you start playing, you, you can obviously, you know, yeah, but like, you can listen, build that. Let me, let me but, tell you, I, I tested out the Preacher. Bro, Preacher slaps. He slapped that hammer of his slaps so friggin' hard. Like I was like, bro. Oh yeah, I'm sure it does. What is it? You you would just I would just literally, for instance, uh Pieta, that was like first try. Not even not even a problem. Straight up went up there. Bam! Every time I'd hit her, it was damn near two hundred damage. I was like, bro, what is going on with this goddamn yeah. preacher? This I'm, preacher's I'm probably, got hands. Just because this dude looks badass, I'll probably use that for the walkthrough and be like you don't have this use the <laughs> preacher you get to be you get to be a little a little chunkier instead but you're gonna it, which it I'm does, at, no i'm, I'm not even sure nice. i'm not even sure how i want to do because so you know for a while now i've made platforms uh walkthroughs platinum based yeah for this game there's no way Ooh, the platinum is hard 
I haven't I haven't seen it's the, not, the it's trophies. So yet. so oh boy. So here's here's my problem with the trophies. <clears throat> Collect all weapons. Collect all armor pieces. Collect all umbral eyes. Collect all rings and pendants. Oh. Collect all ammo types. Collect all inferno spells. Collect all radiant like, spells. Collect all umbral spells. Collect all throwables. Collect all gestures. Which so doesn't I'm, sound that bad, except that there are armor, weapons, yeah, that's, and spells that's what that I was are gonna bring boss up. rewards yep. that are covenant rewards. And right now, the covenant rewards, dude, like the, the invasion covenant. So uh, a typical invasion, I get nine years. Now, there's an item that you're supposed to be able to use that increases the rewards. I tested it. It wasn't working. Maybe it's a pre patch thing. But to get, uh, let me see. I, I was talking to, to Zeo Storm about this. Um, the, the but like armor the, for for people insane. for people that don't know like from the from the little bit that I've played of the game I remember that I was trying to figure out okay what are these uh umbral scarring things for because I did not know what they were for and then I eventually went to Molu or whatever his name is dude that's an umbral yeah, back stuff. in town and you can start buying like boss weapons and boss armor and you're like oh wait so, well, so here's, there's here's, all here's of this thing. currency just to get like one piece of armor from a boss the thing, and then right? each so, boss is so like four pieces yeah Pieta alone would cost I think it was 120 uh, death shrimp that's what we're calling them now yeah death death shrimp, shrimp. To, to buy okay. her stuff it's umbral scarring <laughs> uh <clears throat> Judge Judge Cleric costs roughly 140 to buy all their stuff. End game, you only have about 200 of them. Ooh. Now you yeah. can. There are some things like fighting the Red Reaper that shows up, which sucks. You get, I think it's like 25 or 30 for killing him. So yeah, you could farm him a bunch, and eventually have stuff to to earn it. But you that's to, that's you not need to like get a, a, a build to farm that guy then. Yeah. Then so uh, invasion. I kill somebody. I get nine severed hands from them nine for one successful invasion guess how much the invader chest piece costs i have no idea 750 <laughs> see you say that and i already know that like orubor when peeve are like let's go <laughs> they're like all excited see, that's the thing. so the real, but that's 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 just the chest that's yep. only the chest there's the hell there's the legs there's the gloves that's 84 invasions that are successful to get one piece of armor. And then there's also the armor from the co-op covenant. Oh, yeah, because there, that, that was one of the things that I was uh, telling people while I was streaming. I was like, bro, there's there's four different currencies on here besides vigor. There's like the eyes, the ears, the hands and whatever else there was the. The other thing, the umbral scars, yeah. all of these things. There is a bunch of different stuff for you to collect. Yeah, to, to get to get those all armor trophies is gonna be just an absolutely insane lift. Like I'm probably still I'm gonna I'm gonna actually when when embargo's down, I'm gonna put a poll on the channel and be like, I'm doing a walkthrough, it's not gonna be platinum, but I'll get you through the game. And if people yeah. are on board with that, I'll do it. But like, dude, it's there's no way. There's yeah, absolutely there's, no there's way. There's too much, is what you're what yeah. you're thinking. Yeah, you know, you okay, know, I welcome, actually welcome back to episode 100 where we're farming ears for another four hours today. You know that I actually got platinum in Lies of P. I I didn't, <laughs> I was just like, yeah. I didn't want to go through it again. I didn't I didn't like. Uh, it felt like health pools in New Game Plus got pretty outrageous. They did. But it's actually something that I, because because that's one of the things that has also been like in the discourse quite a bit. People are like, "Oh, which one's better, this or Lies of P?" So let, let's get your take on that. I personally, I like this more than Lies of P. But Lies of P, Lies of P is great, but it's too linear. Yeah, it's it, for, when I play Souls games, I want to find alternate paths. I want to get lost. I want to stumble into boss areas. Lies of P is it, I mean, despite the fact that it is one of the harder Souls likes, I think, at the same time, it's very much like a baby's first Souls game, TM. Because, you I know, mean, the boss first... areas, here's, here's your summon right before the boss, here's your shortcut right before the boss, you know, it, it just, there's a lot of things Lies of P does that makes it more accessible to people new to the genre, but like, you're not, you're never going to get lost wandering in Lies of P. It's always yeah. very clear, like, Keep going this way. Keep going this way. Keep going this, this way. This one is more interconnected world, Dark Souls style almost. 
Yeah, yeah, and you you will, bro. I've been talking to to other people that are are playing through for the embargo, like other reviewers, and they're like, "Hey, where do you where do you go?" <laughs> yeah, like, I've I've seen side. I've seen those in, in Discord. A lot of people that are completely lost, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be great when I'm streaming the game and I get lost." And I'm gonna be like, "Well, guys, I I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I guess I'll Ta- just ta- message ta- Cowboys. Yeah, ta- hey, ta- Cowboys, ta- where am I gonna go now?" <laughs> Which is like, that's kind of why I want to do a walkthrough because people are going to get lost 100%. Yeah. But like, dude, but I think that that's, I think that's yeah. a, actually a good thing. The point yeah. that, that you have multiple paths that you can explore. Oh, I see yeah, that I, as I a absolutely plus. like that. There, there is, I will say there's one instance where um, basically after the fifth beacon, it's like time to make your way to the final boss and you see a new beacon pop up in the distance and you're like, that's where I got to go. And you're like, no fucking idea what this is. <laughs> so I spent like an hour going between regions. Like, is the beacon okay? No, the beacon's not over here. Is the beacon over here? Hmm, no, one's good. Hmm, this one's locked up. Okay, it's probably attached to this. And then I had to like backtrack my way, and I finally found it. But like the the cutscene is just you just see a beacon off in the distance, and you're like, okay, like where's where's that at? Where's there's there should be like a the final beacon is lit off in the blah 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 blah. Go dark crusader finish the battle or, or something yeah but they just, don't tell you just, where it is no yeah you're just wandering finding this shit there's other shit man there's there's shit i found after i wrapped up my playthrough i found a whole invader area that i missed before i mean it, there, so I, I there was a lot of time i wasn't in umbral and i found uh i found a whole a whole mini zone with a vestige and a lamp upgrade from rerunning through areas in umbral because there were bosses where i did not die and if I had died, I would have seen this path. But since I didn't, I was like, let's go. Boss fight done, baby. On my way to the next thing. And didn't yeah, even realize see, that, there were alternate paths there. That doesn't surprise me because on my first run, I also missed uh, a ton of stuff. Which then when yeah. I was on the second run, I was like, oh, let me actually go this way. Because I didn't go this way the other time. And I was like, wait a minute. This circles all the way back around. There's a new area in here. There's like a puzzle section. Yeah. Which is when I started messaging you. And I was like, hey, dude, did you find like this catalyst thing? I want to make sure that you knew all about the crazy stuff. Yeah, there's there's a lot that that people people are going to absolutely get lost in this game. Like it's it's I will say the the interconnectivity always like there will be times where i'm like where does this go and then i'm like oh i'm back at the hub oh okay yeah. all right yeah nice i like that like just the, the connections between zones which is needed because uh and i guess this is uh it's not really spoilery nope. but oh uh, careful new new game plus in this game oh it's gonna hit hard is what you're saying there are no vestiges in new game plus you have to refine them, or they're just no vestiges at all. You can only make your own with seedlings. Oh crap! <sighs> so for people that <clears throat> don't know, seedlings is basically something that you can do like a temporary bonfire. So what Cowboy is saying is that you can't teleport the different bonfires. You have to run the whole way, which would probably explain why your character runs so friggin' fast. Yeah, and you can only have one seedling at a time. Yeah, you can only have and so and it's and it's yeah. consumables. You're gonna have yeah. to figure out a way to farm the damn things. Oh, so you can buy them from from dude. Oh, you can buy. Right oh, right, you can buy it from Molu. Molu sells them for like twenty five hundred things or yeah. whatever. I think. So you'll you'll need to you'll need to regularly be like time to go. Time to go to Malu and load up on five seedlings and, and see. I don't gradually progress through the zones. That doesn't seem very appealing personally for like it seems like a weird thing because usually in new game plus you want to go even faster than you did yeah. in normal game i mean once you to be fair once you know the routes and the shortcuts you you can burn through it pretty fast but like if you're trying to you know there's a lot of uh like for example there's there's one quest where it's like you you get so so the dude that wants you to collect the the items the preacher guy mm-hmm so you get the first, you get his, his first quest chain is all Pilgrim's Perch. You get his stuff, right? Then after that, you need to find him something in like the third zone. Then after that, you need to find him something in like the fourth zone. Then you have to like talk to him hidden somewhere in the fourth zone. Then you need to talk to him in like a different hidden zone. And so like post game, I was like trying to, to wrap up some quest lines to make sure all the steps worked. And I was going all over the map, finding this dude's locations and without vestiges. Yeah. 
That's that's exactly what I'm saying. It feels like a really weird decision that for New Game Plus you don't get vestiges. If shortcuts, I will say this, if shortcuts stay unlocked in New Game Plus, that would alleviate some of the burden. I don't think they do, though. I'm guessing you still need to you, progress. You have in, to unlock in, the shortcuts still? Damn. Probably. I don't, I don't know. I haven't done New Game Plus yet. Just because I was like, there was, you know, I wanted to continue exploring stuff on my main save before forcing myself into that, that New Game Plus. Um, but that, yeah, man, it just no, feels no like vestiges is rough. It feels like such a weird decision not to have vestiges in New Game Plus. It seems like a very much a let's cater to the hardcore souls people. More like let's cater to speedrunners. Here you go, speedrun this. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean I mean speedrunners and, and your you know your new game plus seven players, they'll probably end up enjoying it because it's it's definitely an extra challenge. Yeah. Uh, personally I ain't about that life. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I think I'll stick on my my cozy new game playthroughs and try out a yeah. few different classes. And yeah, that that does sound more fun than going through new game plus and having to experience that. It's a weird thing. Almost reminds me a little bit of like uh, new game plus in Starfield, where they're like, "Oh yeah, new game plus, but we take your money away and your spaceship." And it's like, wait, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean you take my things away? I've worked hard oh, for but these. Don't things. don't worry. You get your cool your cool extra spaceman floaty bullshit ship. You can have that. <laughs> your sperm ship. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you. On your first character as a strength character, what ranged mechanic did you use? Did you use spell casting? Did you use like a throw thing? Uh, throwables until I found a strength scaling crossbow. And then I worked with that for a long time. And then late game, uh, I jumped back to throwables because I found a couple that were really cool. I found one that it, uh, it debuffed the enemy so they deal less and take more damage. And I found a hammer that had high strength scaling and I did like almost 900 damage with it wait so. you could you found thor's hammer you found me no, no <laughs> you can no, throw it's it it's just no this is a straight it's 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 god what was it it's, it's just a hammer it's like a hammer you would find at home depot but there's a ton <laughs> of damage so i would throw this debuff thing at the enemy and then be like thunk, 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 like the dog enemies one shot. I was hitting them for like 1200 damage. <laughs> so, but you Boom. didn't have that much ammunition because you were telling me that like agility is what uh, scales how much ammunition you get. I had a, a thing in my shield that boosted my ammunition. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I was, yeah. I, was, I was looking cozy going through. But even then, most of the time I was, you know, I was running up and bossing people. That was actually one of the things that bothered me a little bit is that you couldn't upgrade the throwable weapons because for people that don't know, like throwables in this game is kind of like they get replenished whenever you rest at a bonfire, which is really cool. Well, vestige, whatever you want to call it, which I found really cool because instead of, you know, in Souls games, I usually don't tend to use a lot of throwable stuff because, like, well, you have to buy it again, right? Yeah. You have to keep rebuying it, and it's a constant ongoing expense. In this game, you can even have, like, say, grenades. Like, I had a, a holy grenade, whatever that's supposed to do. I didn't really test it. But I had this holy grenade, and you could basically throw the holy grenade, and then you would rest, and you'd get a whole bunch more holy grenades to keep throwing as you're advancing through levels. And I thought that was cool, but you couldn't upgrade them. And I was like, I want to so, upgrade this, them like weapons. This is why I swapped to the, the crossbow. The crossbow I could upgrade. Because you could upgrade, but once yeah. you once you get to like the halfway mark through the game, you start finding like you go from bloodied hatchet to enhanced bloody hatchet. And the damage jumps from like 200 to like 600. The base hammer deals like 200 damage. The upgraded hammer deals like 800 damage. So okay. once you start, and from what I can tell, that feels like a version. huge. That feels like a huge jump. Like there should be something yeah. in between, almost. Well, there is the crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, and what I like about the crossbows too is the different arrows. Like I had like the explosive arrow. Yeah, I had can, like the wither arrow, the holy arrow. Yeah. So, yeah, but the throwables that was definitely a nice thing. Obviously, if you're you're a caster, you're not throwing; you're casting instead. Um, but uh, I, th I thought that was nice to give give my my beefy boy a way to do some damage from range. And that, that is part. a that is a cool thing as well because ranged weapons when it comes to this game is you can have the throwables, you can have bow, you can have crossbow, whatever, or you can use a javelins. spell tool. Yeah, I, w I was using javelins for a while, but you can also just have a spell tool, and that takes up your range slot, and that's kind of like how you cast spells. You have the spell tool on there, and then instead of having an ammunition counter, you have a mana gauge that dictates how many spells you can cast yeah. 
And the really cool thing is that you can equip like four spells at once and have them all available at the tap of a button. I guess you didn't experiment with that much with that because you're playing strength. No, I, I did. I mean, my uh, the prep I'm doing a caster. Okay. So I was I was messing around with it. Um, early on, the spells are are obviously kind of limited. Um, but late game, I've seen some spells that I'm like, I want to try that. I'm probably gonna actually go uh, split scaling because I wanna I wanna try out all the umbral spells. The umbral? Yeah. Yeah. Is that one? It's like vomit body parts at an enemy and i'm like <laughs> vomit body parts. let's go i want to see what this does literally blowing chunks uh, in the game yeah <laughs> well it's from it's from the flesh congregator his he has a uh, an umbral spell that's like vomit flesh and body parts and i'm like i, I, I saw i saw that spell i don't remember it saying vomit but okay i guess that's what that well, I, I remember spew, seeing like some spew body parts whatever. Uh, okay see it doesn't say vomit <laughs> The same same difference. You're just <laughs> blah, throwing blood and bones and shit. I'm like, that was neat. Vomiting that. undead corpses. Okay. Yeah. No, I I think that uh, spell casting is going to be particularly interesting in this game. Uh, did you find like ways to recover your mana besides using the the little mana clusters that you can get and buy? Yeah. Oh, you get runes where you get mana back on every hit you do. Oh. Yeah, so like so stuff could... that you slot into your weapon and you can get mana back. Yeah, so you can just be poking stuff to get your mana back over and over, which will make casters much more viable. See, that uh, is something that is something that I think is really cool for pure caster playthroughs, which is something that usually in these games you see casting more of like as a support type thing. Whereas in this yeah, game, uh, I feel like it'll be much more mainstream if you want to play a caster. Well, what what helps is like there's weapons where it's like, you know, the only requirement on the weapon is radiance or inferno. Like you don't need yeah. to to dabble in strength or or dex to use it. You just you know, oh, you're a caster? Don't worry about your strength. Here you go. Yeah, like the, nice. the, the hammer that the Aureus Preacher starts with, that I think only requires pure, radiance. Pure radiance yeah, yeah, it's pure radiance, and it scales off of radiance, even though it's still full physical damage. I don't think it even does yeah. like holy damage or anything. It's just like, nope, That's, scales off of your radiance, which is effectively faith. Uh, as a stat. It's actually something that I'd, uh, that's a lesson I'd like FromSoft to take from this game. Because I, you know, it's always annoying when you're like, oh, I want, you know, I want to use my wing of Estelle that has, you know, huge intelligence bonuses on it. But I got to get 17 points in decks to use this properly or whatever it is. Like, I don't just let me, let me just scale intelligence. I don't, I don't need dexterity to use this. It's an intelligence weapon. Just, yeah, I just, agree. As, as, as a matter of fact, like, I think it was, uh, Lies of P doesn't even require stats for any weapon. You can just equip yeah, whatever the just, hell you want. Doesn't yeah, put even it, matter. Put it on. Yeah, this is what it scales with. Put it on. Yeah, it, 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 you don't need like 50 strength to equip a big hammer. You just equip the big hammer and then however much strength you have is going to dictate how much damage you do or yeah. you swap the handle and now it scales off of something else. Yeah, I think I, I like that idea because like there's nothing, you know, oh, I don't have the strength to pick this up. Like, yeah, see, yeah, it's that's not going to be as a, see, it's not going to be as effective. That's, sure, you could use it. That's probably one of the reasons why when I when I saw that spear from the congregator, it was even more frustrating for me because I had just come off of Lies of P and I'm like, oh, I can equip whatever the hell I want. Then I get here and I'm like, oh, there's a new spear. I want to play with spears. 13 strength, 13 radiance. And I was like, uh. yeah, not for <laughs> I have you. like eight radiance and, and 10 strength or something like that. It's like, this is yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. So, um, how'd you feel about the combat? Because we talked a lot about like the overall feel of the game, the exploration of the levels, all that stuff. I, I like the combat. I, I think it it felt, I think it felt pretty good, especially when you start working in your, you're like when you're rotating, like you're hitting stuff with melee, swapping, throwing a hammer at somebody, switching to umbral, yank a guy off a cliff, switch back to the hammer, hit this guy over in the range. Like what's rotating this rotating between stuff felt good. Yanking a guy off a cliff. What exactly do you mean by that? That might be a mechanic that I haven't tried out yet. Soul rip. Yeah, you can soul rip, but you said you yeet him off of a cliff. So if I soul rip you and I shift your soul to the left, when soul rip ends, you are shifted to your soul, which is now right, floating over nothing, do. and then you are gone. <laughs> right, because they do get like magnetized towards the, the soul thing. Yeah. So I was, like all the big guys, the cage heads, the unger bunger paladin mans. Yeah, I was uh off a cliff. 
experimenting with um experimenting with the soul thing because you actually have a special execution that you can do with the lantern yeah yeah i got but you need to like you need to like fully break their their wither gauge which i'm assuming it's going to be way easier with a hammer because with the spear that thing deals like no wither no, damage yeah, with at that, all. my my charge r2 attack deals 2500 damage okay <laughs> he's, just, he's, like, he's just thinking how much he pokes for <laughs> see the wheels turning <laughs> <laughs> I'm hitting right now for 180 damage on a good day, <laughs> but I'm still very early on. My my pokey sticks only at plus two. There's time for it to grow still. No and strength. I'm, strength in this game is strong for sure. Like you, you bonk. Yeah, ag yeah agility I, feels I, like it. It just gives you more versatility for how much you can eat stuff at enemies, which is also cool. yeah. Oh, yeah, because you can. You can, there were a couple of people where I I soul rip into the hammer and my hammer had a little bit of wither damage on it so it, it would auto combo into the uh the soul execution yeah you explode their soul out of them is there is there any other advantage to the soul execution or is it just like no it's just the special animation that's it do you get like additional uh, soul fleet charges or something like that probably i haven't been paying much attention to it yeah i haven't because i just i just bonk that. stuff yeah, and unfortunately, in my case, I don't get to do a lot of soul executions, so I haven't gotten to test that all that much. Really, like the start of the game, so yeah, 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 still at the start. But yeah, I think that the um, the combat's pretty interesting. I thought that it was neat that they put uh, a kick in, but at the same time, they're like, "Oh, we're also going to put this special multi hit attack," which I completely forgot yeah. on the first live streams, three live streams. Oh, that I, I did. I, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> use that until the walkthrough prep. I was like, "Oh, this is the thing." <laughs> so I didn't I, most of my entire playthrough okay. I didn't use it. I feel it. I feel a little bit better now because yesterday I'm I mean I, this would have been a couple of days ago by the time this video goes live but like yesterday I was recording my um my guide and I was going through all of the tutorial things to make sure that I didn't miss anything and I was like oh and also there's this special attack that you can do by pressing L1 and the right trigger yeah. but I thought that you could like go into a block and then you would press the right trigger and it would do it, but it doesn't work. You have to press them simultaneously like you do the kick. And then when I did it, I was like, wait a minute. This is a whole new attack that I haven't used in like, I don't know, 20 hours of gameplay, which is insane. And it actually yeah. feels like it's a pretty good attack depending on which weapon you're using and whatnot. I like that. The hammer, <clears throat> like, so the great sword is weird. You like put it above you and do like a little Spin rotate thing. into yeah. a big smash in it. <laughs> If stuff's right on top, you it'll hit, but it didn't really work all that well. Whereas the hammer, you just go. It does. It does like three hits, right? With the hammer, at least with yeah, the, 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 the Orion really nice. creature. Yeah, it, it did three hits, which is really good. Yeah, because the hammer, you do a full rotation, and there's a there's a dog enemy a little bit later. It replaces the standard dog. Oh no, never mind. They're early on too. But anyway, the dog that has the metal face cage. I hate so, those dogs, bro. Those yeah, dogs you are terrible. Break the cage before you can, yeah, well, with the spin to win, I would get on top of them and I would go and break it and then come down with the hammer and smash them and kill them. Okay. So I started using my spin attack to kill the dogs. And that was my, that was the new go-to. The, the other really cool thing that I feel that they've done with combat is that you can parry with anything. Just like if you're yep. dual wielding, you can parry. If you're two-handing, you can parry, which is interesting because the, the first run that I did because, um, you know, I'm not too used to the game. I'm like, I'm going to dodge everything. So I was killing bosses yeah. by just dodging every single move that they had. And that's viable. Yeah, that's getting, a way getting to do Getting the parries it. is strong. Getting that follow yeah, up. But that's, that's the thing. Immediately on the, on the second character that I did, I was like, okay, now I'm just going to try parrying everything. And I was like, bro, this is amazing. You, you just get so much aggression out. Because basically yeah. a parry is a huge chunk of their uh, whatever the stagger it is. Age. The stagger gauge, and well, so I like you, that can, you can you can do that or charged heavies. Either or is gonna deplete that uh, gauge. Listen, that's that's just for your hammer, buddy. Sorry. Because yeah. <laughs> I would go, I would go like, listen, parry, my parry, charge and then spear. I would do a charged heavy, break them, crit, dead. My charged spear. She says no. She's like nope. <laughs> it does. It it doesn't deal that much with. So it depends on your weapon very much. And I'm assuming like the heavier the weapon, the more stagger gauge you'll do. Like you'll still do yeah. some oh, yeah. stagger gauge, but it's very little with the spear that I have. A charge, a charge heavy. On a typical enemy, I'm chopping off about a third of their stagger gauge with a charged heavy, if Damn. not more. Yeah. <laughs> but that's assuming they don't die. <laughs> they usually die. Yeah. 
that that that's the the other thing if you're trying to sometimes stagger you end up killing them instead uh i think that another mechanic that uh they have in here which they do have backstabs but i think that that's probably going to be underutilized did you use backstabs a whole lot during no, your it, playthrough? i mean it's it's similar to the they're bloodborne backstabs. it's bloodborne bla backstabs yeah, yeah yeah get a get a charged attack and then you get a free visceral but, but there's mo it, there's not enough enemies well so getting off the charged attack maybe with like the spear maybe with a lighter weapon even then, I feel like a lot of enemies don't have enough animation lock to where you're going to circle and get off a charged attack. It's yeah, that's, only like a, I snuck on top of you, I'm going to hit this type deal. Yeah, because the, the charge time is pretty much the same for all weapons. It's not okay, like yeah, all yeah, lighter it's, weapons have fat. No, it's the same charge time for everything. The thing is, at least from my, from what I've experienced so far, the thing is, which, which I find interesting because like they teach you how to do backstabs early on in the game and they're like oh here's this enemy he's got his back yeah. turned you can and go up behind him, him and you can backstab him you backstab him and then you never use the mechanic again because <laughs> you never yeah. find enemies with their backs turned. at least in this early section i was wondering if you had because you play the whole um, game you, do you find enemies with their backs turned to you at any point the only real use case i've had was after i ran through an area and then locked a shortcut and then I was taking that shortcut to get back to where I wanted to go. The enemies were facing the other direction because that was the direction that you have to come from initially. So I could okay. get a free backstab on one and then, you know, kill the rest. There's, I mean, there's a couple, there's a couple where like, you'll see an enemy kind of slowly pathing and looking around and you might be able to do it. But most of the time I was just like, I'm just going to run up and smack you. I mean, strength in this game is, is even more unga bunga than it is in souls. Like I was, I was smacking shit. Did you did you ever find like a one hundred percent physical block shield? Uh, no. The highest I think I saw. I'm gonna throw There's a number. A, I I would assume it would be like sixty percent would be like the highest. It's it's, it's seventy. I can I can check. Real I fast. didn't I, I didn't miss by much. I didn't miss I by didn't much. Check. Yeah, me, that's because there there were there were two shields that. I remember there's one from like the final boss and there's one that I found down in the depths that's crazy strong but has like absolutely insane weight. I'll let me pull up. I'm gonna I'm gonna um because like pull up and, and look at these real the fast. The thing the thing about shields is also that they require um you you basically need if you wanna have a shield and you wanna actually block you're going to need to not only have a shield with high block chance, but on top of it, you're going to have to wear some armor because yep. the more armor you have, the less chip damage you're going to take or wither damage. Because whenever you block, you take wither damage. So that's damage that you can kind of like recover. But shields are... It I feels think shields are insane in this game, to be honest. I might, for the walkthrough, I'll probably even recommend that, that people use uh, like a shield and a one-hander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no... I'm I'm not saying that shields are bad. I'm saying that they're not going to be what you expect where you can just like hold it up like a wall and just block stuff like you would usually do. That's yeah. not going to be the strategy that you're going to be going for. I actually think that light shields make parrying significantly easier. I don't know if they have better No, they uh, do. They do. Light shields they, they have better have, parry frames they have whereas better parry frames, yeah. Cuz like when yeah, I was so when I was making my beginner's guide, I was like, "Okay, guys, and I'm going to show you how to parry using like two handers." And I whiff like two parries, and I was like, "Wow, parrying with shield is way easier." Because uh, so the there's, the Mornstead there's, there's couple, the Mornstead infantry couple. guy that I started with, he has like a light shield, and that's why I just started practicing parrying. And I was like, "Oh, this feels great." So there's there's one I found called the Fulverano. Uh, that one's 73 physical, 61 stability, and it's pretty light. It's only at 18. There's one that's really good called Angel's Aegis. That's like 70 across the board, 72 stability. That's 28. You have one that you get earlier that weighs 40, but it's 72 physical, 74 stability. And then the final boss one is 80 physical, 78 stability, but that weighs a whopping 50 weight units, which is insane. Damn. Yeah, at 50, just, just for, for the sake of, of testing this. So if I were to put on the 50 weight unit one. You're um, instantly going to go into heavy encumbrance, I'm assuming, depending on your, uh, depending on how uh, much endurance you have. I'd probably have to, let me see, what's a one-hander? Okay, so I could use a one-handed hammer with that shield and 
heavy head, arms, legs, and the heaviest chest I could use would be a light. It would actually be the werewolf armor, and I would still be at medium encumbrance, but yeah, if you wanted to run heavy with it, you're, you're with a medium torso or above, you're going into the heavy category. And that's taking off your ranged and using thrown weapons. Damn. So yeah, there are but some that, uh, that, there are some shields in there, but none of them have a hundred percent physical block from what we've seen so far. Then no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go fight something with it while we're God. This thing is huge. The shield. <laughs> it's like if you were to take Havel's weapon and just turn it into a shield. Let's see what this block looks like. I mean, you do have Havel's shield. Just looks like a friggin' shovel, almost like the the shovel of one of those industrial. Uh, machi but the, what's, industrial what's, machine. Well, what's interesting here is the. Uh, Oh, he did a grab attack. I'm gonna take big damage here. No, the uh, so the the shield though, it's not you're not taking like the chip damage that you take. That that relates to how much wither damage you're taking. Yes. Like it doesn't it doesn't go through. So that's why I think shields would be super strong on a playthrough because you would eventually you would just block every single attack that comes your way, and then just get in a, but a it, quick follow up. It consumes a ton of stamina. That's the problem. It's not super easy to block everything. I rarely go for full yeah. on blocks. Usually, I go for parries if I'm bringing out the shield. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be a it would be a you know great shield only type thing. Hmm. Because you'd have to. I mean, to I can I can block a lot of attacks with the the shield. Like I was just fighting the dude I was doing this test with is a uh, big old elite guy that uses a two handed hammer. Let me see, just for the, the sake of testing. Let me, come on, hit me. So, big hits, big hit. He did a big wind-up hit. I'm down to half stamina after taking, like, four or five huge Damn. hits from this guy. Yeah, but that's, but that's it's, again, it's that's an in-game shield. Though. Yeah, but that's an in-game shield. So, you know, at the very beginning, I think you're going to be... You're going to be a little bit more conditioned when it comes to that stuff. But the interesting thing is that it does make shields, like... A little bit different than what you would expect it's not just that passive thing well i'm just going to bring up a shield block everything it's more so use it for parry use it situationally you're not going to be traditional sword and board guy so to speak i've been using them mostly for parrying and it's been pretty friggin' effective even on bosses like i was actually trying to parry the congregator of flesh but i don't think you can at least it didn't yeah, I mean, feel it's like you so, could so even using a lighter heavy shield it still felt pretty good um I think if you were to go go great shield and then run a a one hander that's focused around status, you would probably you would probably do pretty well doing that, and then just block everything, and then hit back. I don't know from from given that was like a minute a minute long test. I do think that could work. So, your overall thoughts on the game now that you finished it. How did you uh, how did you like the whole experience? Because I know that you've been enjoying the game quite a bit, but like uh, four out of five. Four out of five, straight up. Four out of five. Yeah. So you recommend it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely has its its little quirks here and there that I think stop it from being, uh, you know, the five out of five that people examples were for. Uh, netcode is atrocious right oh, now. Oh, I haven't tested multiplayer yet. Yeah. Um. Multi multiplayer like so it's a case of like wins like really good highs but also really low lows so for example the game has like seamless co-op the idea is if i join in your lobby we just keep playing i don't leave after the boss if i die you can resurrect that's, me that's that's actually one of the features that i was like man this sounds really good but then i was reading the experience some people were having on discord and i was like uh... yeah so the problem is we're we're vibing through the game together let's say we jump in together we're going to start our journey we clear through all of uh, Pilgrim's Perch up to Congregator Flesh. And we're like, all right, that was a lot. I'm going to go take a break. I'm going to get some lunch or something. That's great. Problem, you made all that progress. I'm still back at the start of the game. Yep. And, you know, with... with <laughs> Typically, that's just how it works in a Souls game. However, with seamless co-op, where you're not just joining somebody and helping to kill a boss, where you're playing through the entirety of a zone with them onto the boss past the boss you're going to keep going you would expect to get similar experience and and you know 
even if you're not getting the same key items, like know, shortcuts or something, I don't know. It just, it feels weird because you could play with somebody for five, six hours and not progress. So ultimately co-op is always, it's still going to be a use I mean, case you, of- you level up and you get uh, whatever drops that you can get from the game. Yeah, chests, random, random drops. But, yeah, you don't get chests or anything. Yeah, so you can't you can't do a a true co-op playthrough. It's still a case of, hey, I'm taking my high level buddy and I'm gonna play through the game with you and and I swear to be all shield as we play or something. Yeah, but like you know, what if happens? I'm not through the game. Have you have you actually been testing it? Because like I'm curious to to know what happens if somebody dies in a multiplayer um, session. So if they die, y'all just respawn together back at the vestige. So what if what if only one of us dies? The other one can keep going. Uh, if you die, well, so if I die, you can resurrect me. I have like a visage you can resurrect. I don't know if the host dies. What happens? I think if the host dies, it's just back to the visage. Okay. Yeah, no, it is. If the host dies, you're back to the visage. Um, and so PvP still- right now, PvP is hot mess. Ooh. So there's downscaling, but from what I can tell, there's no connectivity. I ran into uh, some dude the other day, Coop. Uh, What did he say? You mean there's no matchmaking? So he was like, hey, I think I invaded you. (laughs) Because I was, so I'd used a a moth to warp out, and the invasion triggered as I had already disappeared. So he invaded my world. I was fully invisible. And I was just chasing him around invisible with a hammer, which I got that in my build video. So it's really funny. <laughs> um, but he brought a base. He took a brand new character and tried to invade and invaded my level 114 ass up in the Abbey. Oh, no. That sounds like a bad way. time. Yeah. And it's the same way. I invaded, I invaded a couple people that were like Pilgrim's Perch starting the game. And here's my Giga Chad guy with his like hammer of a thousand dooms and you know nine a hundred plus heals and I'm just coming in like there's one dude I invaded and I guess he didn't notice he was invaded he's running around fighting stuff I just pull up the crossbow I'm like four hundred damage shot one shot dude's dead and I'm like this is fucked <laughs> this is like so. Pour one out for poor little Timmy. <laughs> just like yeah, dude. learning how to play the game in Pilgrim's Reach. It's one tap by Cowboy. Dude, it was, I, yeah, so. You did that I man mean, dirty, dude. That's not right. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the multiplayer action said slaughter lamp bearer. I was just following <laughs> instructions. <laughs> slaughter lamp bearer. But yeah, it's so multiplayer is going to be. Pro- I mean, and given right now, there's extremes because it's yeah, right. Right second, now, there's the not- second wave of content creators and and people in the you know at the end of the game like me. Maybe when more people, maybe with more people, there's matchmaking. But right now, that's, man, that's also is- that's also what I'm thinking. Potentially, right now, they just have open matchmaking for the sake of people being able to do lobbies and whatnot. I hope so, man, because yeah, it's cause- brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. A level oh, you one. Can also, you can you can soul rip in PvP. Oh no, you soul rip people I off had, of cliffs. I I had this dude that was like stutter stepping and just so the poison PvP is whacked out. Like I was trying to swing my big hammer and the dude was interrupting me with a one handed mace and I was like, this fucking sucks. And I was like, I can't. Like I would I would go to swing and he would just go attack and then he would back away, attack and back away and I'm like, this fucking try hard. I swear to God. And then he kept doing it and eventually I was just like, you know what? <laughs> Zoo. And he was like, huh? Yeet. Boosh. And I was like, get <laughs> fucked, idiot. That was so frustrating. Uh, that that's that's gotta I got I gotta try out the, the tactic of like yeeting people off of cliffs because I, I could be yeeting those dudes with the spiky heads because they're annoying yeah. as hell to deal that's, with. That's that's how you beat them. You yeet them. Yeah. That rhymed. I didn't even mean it to, but that was, <laughs> that was good, yeah. How do you beat them? You yeet them. You yeet them off of cliffs. Damn it. Yeah. I got to make like a, a guide for that now on top of the other. But yeah. Guide yeah. That so, I did. so, but so, you know, highs and lows, like it's cool that, that you, I can just invade from the hub and it's going to invade anywhere in the world. It's not so cool that I'm invading a low level dude and bullying him. It's cool that we have super seamless co-op. It's not cool that I can play with a buddy for 10 hours, but I get no real progress from doing so. 
I mean, you um, get those coins to, to get the armor and whatnot. Yeah, I only got to earn 750 of them now. Well, there to, you go. To, you need to help us 70 friends or something. <laughs> yeah, like that That stuff, the, uh, you know, the covenant rewards are super high. Um, other other little things, like, I mean, I get I get the whole thing of, of Souls games is the obscurity, but times where it's like I unlock the final boss and you just see a beacon, but then you're wandering for an hour because the game nothing you know at least in in souls you know like you know when you when you get the the bell towers you see like the seals removing the golden door seals moving yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay i gotta supposed go, there. To go there now yeah yeah and that's that's all even even if i just even if it just give, showed, give me a glimpse showed a better yeah because what you actually see so you like light the final tower and then from where you're at you just see a new light go off that's out in the distance like five miles away no clue where it's at there's you don't get a map or anything like a map being like you know this area so you're just like where the fuck's that and then you're just left wandering um which you know it it's so and it's weird because sometimes the game does give you feedback like at the start you know cleanse the five beacons but then there's like that and you're like where does like i haven't met anybody that just figured out where to go for the final boss everyone has been like hey where, where does this go? Where do I go? Where, 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 what do I do next? <laughs> like, he's just lost. Um, which, I mean, you know, it's good, but just a pinch more feedback would be helpful. You know, like, for example, after you get through your, uh, your, your third beacon, uh, you, so the, let me see, there's, there's three beacons you can do. No, hang on. Two, you just two early beacons. After you get past those, you need to use your bell keys for another one. But it's just like a note, right? So you find one note, guy mentions, go by the windmill. Great, go by the windmill, found my way. The other note mentions, go through the bell door. Went there, found my way. Um, but then you get to the boss, the final boss, once again, nothing. So just kind of, you know, that little little area where it was missing a little bit of feedback. Um, other stuff, the um, there were some some UI issues, like yeah, example, you were telling me the the upgrades and whatnot. They wouldn't show the proper next level of proper numbers when you're when you're putting uh, runes into your weapon. The damage of that rune isn't shown in your weapon DPS, so I had to just equip different combinations of runes and R one an enemy over and over again to figure out what was the best rune setup. Just just weird stuff like that. Like why why not just see the first hey, your damage is not eight sixty one now it's ninety one. The first thing that I felt was kind of weird was you know how you can go to the screen where you see your stats? And mm -hmm. I I go in there and the first thing that I'm thinking is like, okay, what button do I have to press to scroll over to the stats? Yeah, see there's what no, each of there's the no, uh, there's yeah. nothing. And I was there's like, nothing. bro, that's why I was asking you, like, hey, listen, my ammunition's going off the charts. This is great why <laughs> is it because yeah. i'm leveling up <laughs> and then you told me oh it's agility agility increases it and i was like i, I didn't know like why was yeah. that yeah and that and that's the thing you know it's just it's little things little feedback elements that are usually present in in other souls games that aren't present here and like i like obscurity as much as the next guy but still you want you want feedback about stuff yeah and so like f feedback on the runes feedback on on what exactly the stats do like the, the various elemental damages i just asked the devs i'm like so what what is the difference between damage types and they broke down a list for me but until then i had no clue people in the discord had no clue they were all like yeah like i just asked yeah, you earlier in the podcast what the hell is ignite because I, i've yeah i i didn't even know it was called ignite i remember seeing like a fire thing on there and i was like okay this one's burned because i've tested this one but there's one yeah. immediately below it that looks the same and i have no idea what it does yeah, yeah. So it's just it, there's a lot of small things like that that I think uh, they they stop it from from really hitting that five out of five. But Damn it. yeah, I mean it's still it's still it's still a great game. I had yeah, a ton I, of fun playing it. I mean, I had like a 53 episode let's play. I'm still discovering stuff after the let's play. There's uh, the all, other two endings to go for, which I'm gonna try and get on the the walkthrough prep and the walkthrough. So there's other stuff to do still, which is great. Uh, but I, I mean, at least from what I from what I've played so far, especially seeing the amount of feedback 
that we've been giving them in the creator discord about like stuff that could be improved. Honestly, I think if the game had like another six months, this would have been a five out of five that could See, potentially actually stand up to from software. That's the thing where, that always frustrates me is that we, we keep having these situations with a lot of games where it feels like they could have just used that, that little bit more, just a little yeah. bit more time to polish out a couple of things. Like I've been, I've, I've also been providing a ton of feedback with the, the crashes that I've been having with AMD and stuff like that, sending them like crash logs. I even say, sent them like my corrupted save file to hopefully prevent that from happening to anybody else. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those situations. I just, it just kind of feels weird. Cause like, I don't even feel like there's that many, you know, obviously we have Spider-Man coming out soon, I guess. But other than that, there's not even that much coming out right now. And even even then, I would do argue you, that. Do you ever do? Do you ever do indie stuff? I don't do a lot of indie stuff. I wish I so, had more time to do it. The last one, the last well, indie game that I did was Halls of Torment. Blast of uh, or uh, Blasphemous Two that dropped right in the middle of the like Baldur's Gate Armored Core Starfield block. So I'm gonna go back and play that because the first one was really good. And then there's another game coming out called uh, confirm confirm the name correctly here. Uh, the Last Faith which is basically like Bloodborne meets Castlevania. Hmm. And so that's, yeah, that's I'm, another one I'm going to I'm going to But what I what I'm saying is like they had like a wide berth to potentially delay the game a little bit more and sort out some of these problems that you're you're talking about here and even some of the performance issues that I experienced which you know they might still patch some of that stuff out. But like they're definitely not going to fix everything that you just told me between now yeah. and release. There's there's no, no way. No, they're not. Yeah. And it's just it's it it is disappointing because the the world connectivity phenomenal, the the visual design and the the smoothness of play once once you adjust to it phenomenal. Yeah, yeah but see, and you're I, saying there's an adjustment period as well. That's not is, just me. Yeah. I mean, well, but there's there's an adjustment period with with every new Souls like you know, aside from like actual Souls games because it's all been the same shit. Like Lies of P, there was definitely an adjustment time. Neo, there's an adjustment. Yeah, listen, time. my Here, adjustment time to Lies of P was a hundred hours until I uninstalled it after I platinum that bitch out of spite. <laughs> yeah, okay. you, you, you have a weird relationship with that game. But like, there's <laughs> there's a lot of things about this game that are really really good, and it's it's just disappointing because with you know it's still a solid game. People are still gonna enjoy it, but like with with another six months, with another just small polish on certain mechanics like the feedback a little bit of extra direction when you when you're doing certain events a little bit you know more feet like for example here's here's a npc quest line that i don't think anyone's going to figure out so there's a lady you can meet you have to give her an item that's hidden after that she is free from her jail you can find her this is starting by. to sound like grape lady yeah, you're right. you can talk. To, yeah, it is. You talk to her. <laughs> she says some stuff. After that, she leaves that zone and she appears uh, near one of the bosses that you had previously killed. You talk to her there and you find out that she used to be a noble. After you find the noble woman's dress, you go back and you talk to her wearing the noble woman's dress. She gives you some more detail about her previous life as royalty. Towards the end of the game, you can find like a, a royalty-based item and then you take it back to her. That's going to make her shift location again. And then if you go and you talk to her before starting the final boss, different events play out and you get a hidden boss fight. But who the fuck's going to figure this out without a walkthrough or a guide? But that's something that happens in regular Souls games as well. It is, it is. But this you one's just don't like obscure. it. <laughs> well, all right, all right, all right. Better, better, better. Yeah, it's very grape lady, right? Uh, better example. So there's the there's a mercenary lady that you can free in a swamp, and her whole thing is like, you you help me uh, fight bosses, and you know give me my my payout from those bosses, and I'll help you. So the idea is you bring her to certain bosses, you summon her. Well, when you look at the summons, they're just like moths. So first, I got to kind of guess which one she is. And her whole quest line is you I have to bring her. Yet, so yeah, you, you have to. Well, it's just like after you die to boss, you go back and there's like figures that look like they're made. No, of no, I've, I've, I've seen that. What I mean is I haven't yeah. summoned yet, so I haven't tested. So you're saying there's no name on the summons? I'm trying to remember. I don't, I don't recall if there is. There might be. I haven't summoned a lot. But, but anyway, so point is you need, you need to bring her along to certain bosses after those bosses you have to go back to the npc give her the the money or whatever she wants 
And if you do a boss and then don't talk to her afterwards, she gets all pissy with you. And so you get like one freebie. But if you do it a second time, summon her to a boss and not give her her reward, she'll end up attacking you. But until you die at a boss, you can't summon. So you would have to purposefully die to so each boss weird that you have to at die least in order once. To summon. Yeah, you would have to die once to see if this is a boss that has that lady so that you can summon. That's such Another a, example. Yeah, that is a weird there's, one. There's a trophy Listen, stop around... stop spoiling quests. Okay? It's just weird, but there's, there's, another, there's another one around getting, uh, getting a certain NPC to help in the fight against the Light Reaper and get his revenge. All right. Uh, basically, guy, guy in the trailer. Paladin Isaac. The guy that dies at the, the start of the game. You can summon him and fight the Light Reaper with him, but you fight the Light Reaper a couple times throughout the game. If you kill the Light Reaper before the final encounter with him, you can never summon Isaac to fight the Light Reaper, and therefore you completely miss out on the quest of having Isaac assist against the Light Reaper and miss out on that trophy because you were too good and you killed the Light Reaper early. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of situations there that definitely, I mean, I don't, I, when it comes to the obscurity of the quests, that's something that I'm a little bit more neutral on. I mean, depending, depending, because I haven't experienced all the stuff that you have, but there's some of those that I'm a little bit more neutral on because I'm okay with missing out on some stuff first playthrough that you do. I don't think you have to figure out the whole game first time that you play it. It's whatever. Yeah. But uh, the rest of the things, like some of the things that we we're talking about, like more polish on the UI, the weird thing that you just said about, oh, first you die and then you can summon on the boss. That's also kind yeah, it's of just, weird. It's, it's, it's a lot it's, of weird stuff. You it's know? a lot of little things that kind of get annoying. Because like one of the things that I really liked about it was the umbral exploration, which is something that I thought was going to be annoying, but I ended up loving it. I was like, no, this is great. This is fantastic. It, it reminds me of Soul Reaver, which, you know, yeah. if you played Soul Reaver back in the day, you know, it, it is kind of like an interesting dynamic that you have there. And that's kind of cool. Uh, I also ended up enjoying the combat more than I thought I did after I acclimated to it. So there's definitely a lot of things that I'm enjoying, but it does feel like there's that air of, yeah, we really, we blew our load a little bit too soon. This could have used a couple of more months in the oven. It's just, I really wish we, you know, publishers, I don't know if it's the publisher side thing or what is it? I really wish that this pressure would stop and just look, just let him cook. Just let, yeah, let him cook, cook until the meal is done and then serve us the meal so that yeah. we don't have to deal with this. Cause like we keep having this type of stuff happening. We had it with wild hearts we had it with Remnant 2. Now we have it with this. It's, it's just frustrating because these are all good games, but they all have this thing where it does seem like they're re getting released too soon. Well, and I don't, I don't know if I would put this at the, uh, the same level as like Remnant 2 or, or Wild Hearts in terms of... Cause like at the, like, See, all, Remnant all, 2 ran better for me than this. Like all, all, all the minor complaints I have aside, I still played through the entire game at an absolute Oh yeah, blast. I'm going to I'm going to play you know, through the my, entire game. Uh, my, uh, unless let's play unless like 50, I run into 52, some 52 52 episode let's play. Yeah. So like I I did not, you know, by by no means did I have a a bad experience. I had a blast playing it. Yeah, it's like when, these, when it comes these to these little things, they could have taken it to a 5 When it comes out of five. to me, when when it comes to me, it it's more so like unless something game breaking happens along the way, I'm also going to play through the whole thing and I can already tell that I'm going to have a lot of fun. From what I've seen yeah. so far. So it's just one of those things that I really wish that like, just let the devs cook, just let them cook. Cause they clearly know what they're doing. They're doing something cool here. Let them cook until the meal is done. Don't serve it. Okay, to us another, like another one is so like, uh, you know, <laughs> here you go again. Well, no, but like Im improvement on weapon scaling, this is a radiant weapon. You don't need, you don't need strength. You don't need decks. Just use your stuff. Use your radiance and you can use it. Dope. Flat out improvement over from soft games. Hey, you get three respects and three plus ten items, and that's it. Good luck picking your favorite weapon. Yeah. <clears throat> that's shit. When, when you said that, that you only... We, we saw that back in Bloodborne, and it sucked dick then. Bloodborne didn't have yeah. respects. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, like, El Elden Ring limits respects, but you get like 15 per playthrough. That's acceptable. Let players experiment. Yep. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things that I was bringing up. Uh, which is interesting because I've had a bit of a pushback on this, but I was basically saying when I got to the point where I saw that spear and I was like, bro, I know there's a respect functionality in the game. Let me respect right now. 
I want to try yeah. out this spear. I could buy this spear right now, equip it right now, and play with it right now. Give me one reason why I shouldn't be able to do it. And then I had yeah. some people tell me, or maybe it's like all the other Souls games. The first time around, you fuck around and find out. And I was like, oh, let's never improve on the formula, I guess, because yeah. I don't know, reasons? Like, who cares? It's like, listen. Uh, yeah, just have, have, have. Just give me a respect. The, bla the, the blacksmith, as you <clears throat> progress, they sell the materials for one through three, four through six, and seven through nine. They don't sell the final material. Why? Just sell it. Make it, make it cost. Make it super expensive. Make yeah, it, yeah, 10,000 10, vigor to get one. But you can buy them. That's it. Yeah, so let me do it. The, the buying item. of the, the, buying of the final. He sells a respec item. He sells one. He sells one. Why not? Yeah, the, it the, already costs. It costs eight thousand. Just have more. If I want to respec early and I go through the the arduous think, process of farming eight thousand vigor, just let me fucking do it. I think respecing is definitely something that these games we should have it earlier because the and and, and I've had someone someone also told me it's like well if you do a little bit of prep you won't have to worry about respec and I was like motherfucker. Bro, you understand that nobody's even playing this game? There's no wiki, bro. What do you mean? Do do some preparation. I am the preparation. Yeah, which is is stupid because like this. <laughs> there's at the end of the day, even if you respec, even if we had free respecs, you know, even if you completely change your build, guess what? Your weapons aren't leveled. Your catalysts aren't leveled. You still need to farm up. Yeah, the the materials to upgrade the weapons to be competent in a new build. So just let me swap. Yep, that was. If actually, I want to spend my time farming up, that's that's my business. Yeah, I I I think definitely respecking would have been really cool to be able to be done earlier because I totally would have instantly done it because I was like I want to try out this spear and I think it's just cooler in these games when you can just try out different weapons. Like what's what's the big deal? That was actually one of the things that I would say Lies of P does really well. There's like hey. I got a new weapon. I'm trying. It's whatever. It's like, I, listen, I'm putting a hammer tip on this, uh, on this friggin' uh, piston thing that goes back and I'm putting a hammer on it and I don't care. Yeah. And it doesn't work very well, but I can do it. You know? Yeah. But more, that's more freedom cool in these games, I yeah. think is, it's always a good thing. For sure. But, uh, anyways, uh, that is going to be it for now, guys, because, uh, I also have, uh, another commitment that I need to get to. But these are kind of like, you know, Cowboy, you're going to have a review by the time this goes up, right? Full-on yeah. review for the game. So you guys can check that out on Cowboy's channel. There's going to be links in the description down below. And I'll be playing through the whole thing uh, live. Cowboy also has uh, his full Let's Play. There's going to be a walkthrough prep streams, and there's going to maybe, be a Maybe going to be the walkthrough. Walk we need to, I need to decide <laughs> that stuff. Cowboy's not committing. He's non-committal on the walk. It's gonna be a ninety-nine percent walkthrough because we ain't getting everything. <laughs> All right, but that is gonna be it. Uh, I think that there's something really cool about the game. I think that uh, Cowboy also says that he recommends it. I can't say that I recommend it just yet. I want to finish the game first, but I do like what I've played so far. So there's that. That's gonna be it for now. Thank y'all very much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out. Adios.